Over the next 25 minutes, we're going to debut just a slice of the amazing next-gen games. Everything you see here will highlight the in-game with actual gameplay captured in-engine to give you the best sense of what to expect when Xbox Series X Yep, so comedy intro aside, what we saw last night, or yesterday, depending on when the video's coming out, I did it on the night it came out, was that Epic have now delivered the true taste of next generation titles, thanks to their reveal of Unreal Engine 5. And it probably also solidifies what everyone thought wasn't real in the Hellblade 2 trailer, because... Yep, that ain't that far off in terms of what we saw. Now, that was Unreal Engine 4, but obviously the Unreal Engine 5 that we've now seen in the flesh, thanks to the PS5 reveal in gameplay, was actually showing the fact that these games can all be moved and shifted lock, stock and barrel to Unreal Engine 5. That's obviously not going to be that simple. Nothing is when you convert code from one engine source to another. But based on what we're seeing here as the core aspects of the changes that Unreal Engine 5 delivers, I'm under the impression that this means it's not going to be a huge leap forward and probably it's got a new iteration name in 5 due to the fact that it does contain one of the biggest changes in real-time rendering. And that is those micro polygons. Obviously the Lumen engine is another big part of it, but this is all centered around one of the biggest changes and that gigantic leap that Sony are pushing forward in that PS5's IO and SSD structure. Now I will be having a full SSD video up very soon over the weekend, so please stay tuned for that. But here, I'm really gonna to touch on what came out of this Unreal Engine demo and just what we can expect in the next generation and whether or not that SSD is actually making a big difference here or not. If you'd believe Tim Sweeney, that is. So the first thing we can see in this demo is it's obviously bloody gorgeous, but it does go beyond that. Now, the Lumen engine, if we talk about that for a moment, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about global illumination and real-time light bouncing because it's not exactly a new technology. It's very impressive what they've done here, but a lot of the techniques and methods here are all using that accumulation, temporal accumulation system that's been around since the probably the start of the generation, give or take. I discussed this in great detail way back when Uncharted 4 was actually being launched or well, before it was launched based on just video analysis you can, everyone knows that everything i do is based on video analysis hardly any uh, developers speak to me directly outside of probably releasing a video and occasionally i do get a chance to speak to them in depth so most of my analysis is based on looking at video footage and understanding what it's done or then getting hands-on with the code so looking at the lumen system it's quite obvious instantly that they're using that accumulation system to retrieve the bounces of light that they're using in there but you can see that the accumulation surface on the on the surface textures of the meshes you can see that that light source actually trails a little bit and you can see it later in the video where the shadow maps they're also dithered and stochastic in their sampling the edges just as the light beams through the cave here on the floor look at the jittered edges on the shadows and then they filter this based on that solution to just bring in the the image quality this is very very similar to the solution we saw in uncharted 4 and in fact overall the engine and the 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 aspirations that this has got in terms of what they're trying to deliver does feel to me like a combination between the uncharted games and obviously the tomb raider games the modern tomb raider games I mean, the, the character herself is clearly Lara Croft in everything but name, but fundamentally what they're trying to achieve is a demonstration of just what the engine can deliver. And that real-time lighting, that bounce of light, which includes specular and obviously shadow maps which are cast into that system from the micro polygon construction, that means that every element of the light source can actually bounce. You can see the light source under the rocks here actually moving as they turn the light off and move it around the cave. And then later on when she's using the light source bouncing off the cave, you've got that blue light source bouncing in again it's not the same but it's very similar to the solutions we saw in Uncharted 4 which would have been placed in there by the developers in their engine themselves but you can see when I talked about this on the original reveal how when Nate walked through the cave and his torchlight bounces back out and reflects off the caustic reflections of the water caustics are the light reflection that ripply effect and that's just a texture map applied to the surface like a light map effectively that's animated in real time just to give that that 
wavy effect and as nate walks through the cave here you can see as he gets to the entrance here and he stops for a second i'm just going to slow it down you see that area around the light source look at this shadow coming afterwards of that light source that's actually radiating around to try and emulate that bounce light and that's been done in this game on many many occasions throughout the title such as here in a similar effect actually the light is coming through that break in the side of the cave and it's bouncing off the water the core sticks and then bouncing on the top of the boat onto nate's face so it's both hitting static and dynamic geometry and really one of the best examples of this is games like quantum break and the sadly missed and absolutely ahead of its time the tomorrow children now this title was one of the first titles to really push global illumination as a a multi-bounce solution i think off the top of my head it has three bounces of light in there um, and again just like this solution here it's all based on on static geometry the same as the the nanotech or nanite tech sorry nanotech i'm thinking of uh, pixar film there but here you can see that the actual light color from the wall is bouncing onto the skin and the clothing of the main character so that's a multi-bounce solution the game also used things like ray march reflections rather than screen space reflections so you could have off-screen reflections way before ray tracing became what everyone now talks about the only solution that can possibly imagine real-time reflections without using screen space reflections so the game here uses voxelization to voxelize the static geometry and then it builds an arc tree along those to try and basically a hierarchy very similar to the bvh in ray tracing and this is obviously to minimize the memory reads back and forth to understand what your geometry is touching what the ray is bouncing so i'm assuming that the lumen system here is using a very similar solution it's probably mixing up between static geometry using voxel solution the big massive stuff and then the small more intricate dynamic stuff is probably a screen space solution and it uses a ray march or a ray cast into the screen to work out the bounce by sampling the albedo or the color of the surface then take that color source and pass it over and then that accumulation buffer means they can stochastically jitter that solution and then build it up over time possibly i don't know I, like i say i don't know how access to the code i'm basing this on looking at videos to so give me a break if i get some of these bits wrong but fundamentally that's what it looks like they're doing they're using that system and that's probably very similar to what naughty dog did so the loot the illumination system is very very good but they're mixing it up with standard solutions that we've seen in games such as everything we've seen in this generation and prior so you've got screen space reflections here rather than any ray trace fancy ones you can see this on her arm as she moves her arm we see the screen space um, occlusion issues that you get on all of the depth issues that come about on that sample point. And then it looks like it's mixing that up with screen space ambient occlusion because there's obvious occlusion points in the title where she's moving her hands and head. You can see as I zoom in here, as her head moves around, the occlusion points, the alcoves in the scene, that's actually losing its shadow cast. And as she moves away, that comes back. That's a standard sign you would see in SSAO. And I've covered in many, many titles before. And again, you can see this later on at the end of the demo on that huge run right to the end of the scene where she gets right up to the scene. It's very hard to spot, but if you look closely as I zoom in, you can just see that the actual um, ambient occlusion is drawn in underneath that area as she gets up close so again it's more than likely using ambient occlusion screen space ambient occlusion and these are the signs that we're seeing so it's likely mixing all those up together to maximize the potential here and obviously all of those things combined gives you what is a very impressive and illuminated title that has all the elements you'd expect in a modern game such as pbr based materials and all these things combined with that light system to give a very impressive and accomplished visual package so the exciting part there is really think about what the sony studios are going to be delivering on this hardware because they've had even longer to play around with this than epic have and that takes us nicely onto the biggest part of the engine and probably the one that's singly most impressive. And it's not new. It's totally not new. So micro polygons are all based on Lucasfilm's generation way back in the 80s of Rays. Render everything your eyes ever saw, or the Road to Point Rays, which was a location near Lucasfilm when this image was created, the very first high-resolution computer image in 1983. Lucasfilm later to become Pixar who single-handedly generate the computer graphic films we still love today. And this technology is and has been the inspiration and the aim for all real-time rendering to move into. And now that inspiration is now becoming a reality. And when we think about this micro polygon technology, it uses a similar solution to ray tracing. And that is that it starts off by working out a boundary of what your objects are. And then it basically takes that high polygon image, it breaks it down into micro polygons to make it small enough to fit under a pixel. Uh, I think a quarter of a pixel is as small as it goes to. And then basically 
it subdivides those using the mesh shader and then the, sh the shading complexity is based on how much or how little the object is near or far away from the camera and then it basically subdivides that so my approximation here is they're almost certainly using the mesh shader or the primitive shader of the PS5 here to generate this image quality and basically handle the process in terms of not having to rasterize every single triangle per pixel because that would be too expensive as a rasterization solution. Now, there's probably a hybrid that they can do on both sides, and I'm pretty sure they're using a complete solution to generate this, but this is where hardware comes into software. You can always do things in software. That's always the case. People were ray tracing on the Commodore Amiga back in the day, so there's nothing new in the, under the sun in that sense, but hardware acceleration always makes things better. Now, the mesh shader solution has been demoed already with the DX12 Ultimate stuff, and here's some examples on screen. Again, I'll cover this in a future video. Video, but fundamentally it allows you to maximize what is being drawn and you can or can't beat the rasterizer by using this method to basically cheat the rasterizer and do it within the shader compute shader in this instance or the mesh shader in terms of the new solutions that are coming forward in this new generation of hardware and this means that you can call images you can call polygons you can call triangles at a very micro level much more than ever done before so things that are partially occluded you break that mesh down as small as you possibly can into basically back of meshes and then each area can literally be popped off and not drawn at all not actually taking up any time and the faster you call this and the quicker you do you're maximizing what you're getting out of the hardware and this ability to choose between a meshlet which is the solution in the mesh shader or actually just go straight to back face culling triangle culling and an individual primitive and vertex level that's the micro level and that's exactly what we're seeing here in the micro polygon solution everything is being handled at a micro level and it's being handled at a triangle point a vertex point every, every calculation is coming from that level of detail and that gives the developers in the engine specific control over what's being drawn and that means they can just maximize the detail on screen the density and the polygon density and that can only happen if you can get all that data into RAM and that's exactly where the SSD and the IO solution from the PS5 comes into play. Now this really means that they can take that 16 gigabytes of VRAM or 16 gigabytes of RAM whatever is allocated and then just virtualize that within the SSD of 100, 120 gigabytes whatever it might be and that means that all that data can be shipped into the system into VRAM to be rendered on screen as needed. Now this, this still needs a very powerful Powerful GPU. This is still going to scale very heavily on the GPU. That's obvious because it's pushing triangle counts, it's pushing density, it's pushing draws very, very high. But this wouldn't be possible if it couldn't have an extended level of VRAM or a secondary solution, which is what Sony has built around the entire PS5. And this takes me back to the road of the PS5 where I said this was a developer's machine made by developers for developers. That wasn't a cliche, like I said then, and it's absolutely true now. They all ask for SSDs, that's what they've got, but Sony's gone one step ahead and really integrated and built the entire system around the I.O. solution. And that means that even though the Xbox and uh, you know PCs to come, they are going to have to catch up, and they certainly will. Sometime next year, I'm sure we'll see solutions that catch this up. They're going to have to bring this into their level, because unless you're get giving a, a VRAM of a 30, 40 gigabytes of VRAM, you're not going to get near these levels of image quality, density, and objects. They're saying that there's no more normal maps. Obviously, that's not going to happen, because this is only currently available for static geometry within this engine. So the Cameo, ironically, herself, is actually a cameo in the game because she is still rendered in the old school method of polygons, triangles and rasterized. She does not get managed via the micro polygon solution or the nanite technology um, because that's not what this engine is designed around. It's designed around bringing film quality assets into real time rendering and it does that and it does an exceptional job of that. The detail level and the density being able to calculate a vertex level means shadow maps can be wrapped around that as well therefore you're getting per pixel shadow maps because it's per triangle to give you really sharp and clean images and then you just need to basically use that accumulation to sort out the sample rates and minimize the effort on the GPU so they're still going to have to use stochastic solutions accumulation solutions and dynamic resolution solutions because this kind of level of rendering is going to scale very badly with resolution just like ray tracing does because we're now talking about per triangle per pixel and that obviously means the more pixels the more triangles and the more load
But where the I.O. and the speed of the PS5 really comes into play is the part at the end of the demonstration. Being able to stream in that many assets, that many objects at that speed is never, ever going to be done outside of having this kind of hardware because there's just far too much density in that sequence, in that element to be able to be running that without using this as a solution. And that's simply because you can't have this amount of detailed density objects in RAM at one time. It's just not possible. There's not enough RAM. But what you can do is bring that in over the course of the next couple of frames or the next, in this case, 30 frames. So potentially you only need to hold in one second of data in, in real time in gameplay before you can stream and fill that back up with new data, just as Cerny said. So that sequence you just saw, even though there's some obviously issues there with the um, motion blur, the sampling's not that great, the per object motion blur, the velocity blur, the radial blur, it's still impressive because there's no popping there's no lot there's all the elements that we've touched on so the, all these solutions that are being delivered here means that authoring doesn't have to happen anymore you don't have to take a high density model break it down to multiple lots and ship it in the game and make multiple versions that means you reduce draw cores on the system it also means that you don't have to bait normal maps into it to give that detail back it means that on a section just then you're not using imposters in the background sprites to mimic a real life geometry object and then swapping that over to a real geometric object when it gets up close and then having to draw that five or six times in different distances look at a game here like assassin's creed odyssey on on the PC. You can see here on the demo that the LOD is terrible. The density here is amazing. The game's beautiful, do not get me wrong, but this is exactly the limitations that this solution gets rid of, the IO solution, because it no longer has to worry about keeping all that density in, in image at one time. The shadow maps, the popping, all the errors that I'm highlighting, you can see them popping in. All that's gone away because we've kind of gone backwards. We've we've moved back from teraflops are no longer important. It's now about maximizing the triangle count. We've almost gone back to the days of my Sega Saturn box here where it's all about how many triangles per second that's now the most important metric here and just like the old sega 32 boards this really is all about using that sprite scaling technique in a modern 3d geometric object so rather than actually create multiple lods and mirror different distances and object detail by using lots of hard work and authoring you now just take an object at whatever polygon count it is and let the engine work out what it needs to render in terms of a tessellation process nearer or further away from the camera just scale it just like the old arcade games that for me is why i'm really really excited about this next generation of hardware and this from epic this unreal engine 5 demonstration is really the first taste of what is going to be an amazing generation to come and this is really just touch tip of the iceberg kind of stuff in the kind of changes not only can this offer visually but also in gameplay solutions Epic have come first and peeled back the layer of the next generation, but they've only just started a flood of titles that's going to come from both sides of the fence and many developers, and we've got a lot to look forward to in the coming months ahead. Anyway, this was a quick video. It was done over an hour or so. It has taken me a day to render it. I do apologize. I hope it was worthwhile. I hope it was enjoyable, and I hope it's got you hooked and interested in learning more and getting excited about this next generation. Maybe coming back at the weekend and checking out my deep dive into SSDs IO. And let's talk about that in a little bit more depth rather than just summarizing it at a high level. Anyway, I'll catch you very soon on the next one. It's time to see what's next.